Now, what changes are possible with mitochondrial supplements? I found this summary to be very useful, and it comes from the United Mitochondrial Disease Foundation website. They say, in terms of the benefits of treatment, sometimes treatment can be beneficial and noted immediately. Sometimes the benefits of treatment may take a few months to notice. Sometimes the benefits of treatment may never be noticed, but the treatment may be effective in delaying or stopping the progression of the disease. And sometimes patients may not benefit from therapy. What research has been done to look at the effects of different mitochondrial supplements on the symptoms of autism? So far, there's been just one study. And this was a clinical trial published in 2011. And it showed that children with autism who were treated for mitochondrial dysfunction using L-carnitine for three months showed improvements in the symptoms of autism and certain cognitive functions and in muscle strength. And there hasn't been a clinical trial of a full mitochondrial cocktail, but I think it's very important that it be done. And there's the potential that um, improvement might be more dramatic if additional vitamins and supplements were given um, on top of L-carnitine. So how soon can changes be seen after starting a mitochondrial cocktail? Some effects from certain components can be seen within a few days, and some require several months. So a cocktail should be taken for at least three months before assessing efficacy. And that's pretty standard for a lot of vitamin supplements and also a lot of the psychoactive drugs that are prescribed, like SSRIs and antidepressants and so forth. Some of the reported effects have been increased energy, improved attention, social interaction, intellectual ability and language development, and also improved muscle tone, strength, and coordination. Now, I just wanted to close by sharing with you a couple of cases because um, getting information as information can be hard to process, but when you see it in the context of an actual child, it can, uh, it can make a lot more sense. So some of these cases are patients I've seen, and the last case is one that's been published. This first case is of a two and a half year old boy, and he had normal development up to one year, then atypical development. His language development plateaued at single words, and his parents had noticed in the months prior to seeing me that he had very inconsistent eye contact and inconsistent response to name. And he showed a very intense interest in numbers and letters. A few weeks before seeing me, he had the sudden onset of staring spells, sometimes with hand or finger posturing, sometimes facial grimacing and eye deviation. And he'd had regression of language, communication, <coughs> and social interaction over two months. As part of his evaluation, he had the ADOS and the ADIR and was classified as autistic disorder. As part of my evaluation, he had a 24-hour EEG that was normal. He had a normal brain MRI and he had a range of lab testing, and his plasma amino acids showed slightly elevated <coughs> alanine to lysine <coughs> ratio. So I started him on the mitochondria cocktail according to the Johns Hopkins protocol, and he also started a parent training program that we offered at Columbia, a type of behavior therapy. And within a few weeks, his staring spells with the posturing stopped, and there was a reversal of his regression. His language and social interaction returned back to baseline, and then developed rapidly over the next several months. It made him enormous progress, and his, his parents were very dedicated, and um, this, the language program that they did with him was fully implemented by the father. So this next case is an eight-year-old boy. Uh, he was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder at 16 months. And very prominent f clinical features that he displayed were hypotonia, which is low muscle tone, muscle weakness, fatigue, and poor fine and gross motor skill. And his motor development was very delayed, so he didn't walk until he was two and a half years old. He didn't speak until age four and a half. And at four and a half was when mitochondrial dysfunction was suspected, based on both his clinical features and some lab test abnormalities. And he was started on carnitine, CoQ10, vitamin C, E, and B-complex. I didn't know him at that time, but he had dramatic improvement within a month after starting the cocktail, developed speech, and then went on to have very rapid developmental progress uh, across all domains. And of course, he was receiving a wide range of behavior and language therapies as well. I met him at age eight. So he came to my clinic at Columbia. He was no longer compliant with taking the cocktail because he simply refused to take the liquids and the pills. Um, so despite his mother trying very hard, he really wasn't getting anywhere near 
the dosage of uh, mitochondrial supplements that he should have been. And they came in because he had a sudden worsening of anxiety and obsessive compulsive symptoms. He had compulsive hand washing, touching of people, especially strangers. He was unable to walk from one point to the next because he had compulsive retracing of steps. He had a lot of rituals surrounding getting dressed, which made it very difficult for him to get out the door in the morning to go to school. And he had compulsive overeating and gained about 16 pounds over a few months. And he also had a recurrence of migraine headache, which he'd had in the past, but had been under very good control up until this decompensation. So it was really all encompassing. And he was seeing a psychiatrist and was put on a lot of different medication trials mm -hmm. and had prolonged nosebleeds. So nosebleeds that required going to the emergency room, required cauterization to stop, and even on very low doses of medication. And it's known that that's um, a, a side effect that can be a very rare side effect of some of these medications, but children with autism are often more sensitive, and so they display more severe side effects at lower doses, and so he really had um, little to no efficacy on the medications. He resumed a mitochondrial cocktail using one of the over-the-counter combination formulations and had resolution of his symptoms. Okay, and the last case is um, a 14-year-old boy. He was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder at age two, and he had several comorbid diagnoses, including ADHD, mood disorder, and generalized anxiety disorder, and a family history with a lot of other conditions that are suggestive of mitochondrial dysfunction. He also had low tone, muscle weakness, excessive fatigue, incoordination, heat intolerance, and slow recovery from illnesses. He had multiple food allergies, severe constipation, a chronic ear and sinus infections, and was small stature and low weight. You know, he received a lot of behavior and educational therapies, but progress was very hindered by recurrent illnesses. He also had a history of high fever and developmental regression following vaccinations and surgical procedures. At age six, he'd had several screening tests for mitochondrial dysfunction with a neurologist. They were all labeled as being normal, but often what's considered normal within the um, criteria set by lab um, needs to be, it, it often is really isn't truly normal, and you need to be looking at those specific results for more subtle findings. At 14 years, he had repeat testing and had an elevated alanine to lysine ratio on plasma amino acid testing. He had an elevated creatine kinase and also had low free and total carnitine and an abnormal acyl carnitine profile. Um, this is the mitochondrial regimen that he was on and these are some of the improvements that he showed, increased expressive language, improved energy and cognitive skills, overall increased energy and, and feeling of well-being. So these are some sources for more information if you're interested, and um, I have some packets for you. I didn't bring enough, but I'll email all of the materials if, if I don't have um, enough copies. And thank you so much for coming. <laughs>